Oh no. Oh, real sick of this. Oh, that was scary. So I didn't want this to be the typical Walmart bike video you see here on YouTube where they buy it and they take it for one ride and end up returning it. I wanted to really test it on a variety of my desert trails, easy to gnarly over the course of a whole month. And if it held up, I'd end up giving it to one of my friends who's just getting into mountain biking. Because let's face it, bikes are so expensive. The price points are intimidating for anyone trying to get into mountain biking. And those of us who are fortunate to have really nice mountain bikes, you know, understand and appreciate what the extra cost gets you. But at first, two to three hundred dollars sounds a lot more reasonable to get into the sport than seven thousand dollars. Even $1,000. I think we've all seen the obvious reasons to avoid cheap Walmart bikes, like V rim brakes that quickly become unreliable, threaded quill stems with two bolts that are always coming loose, three gears up front that turn into a mess with vague twist shifters, tires that look like more plastic than rubber, limited sizing that's specific to wheel size, and all around just some odd looking designs for full suspension bikes. So when I saw this Hyper Explorer for $248 at Walmart, my curiosity was piqued. Could this bike shred? How could it even be the perfect beginner bike? Yes, it's more than double their normal price range, but it's a full suspension design that looks normal, has disc brakes front and rear, sports a simple 1x9 drivetrain with a trigger shifter, it rocks a standard bar and stem setup, has decent looking tires rolling on 29er wheels with a frame that looks like it would actually fit me, and it can fit a water bottle cage inside the front triangle. Ooh, the future, so trendy, water bottle cage in the, in the frame. Now there isn't anything listed on Walmart's or Hyper's website for geometry, so I busted out my measuring tape and protractor to get an idea on how it compares to normal trail bikes. Now since it has 29 inch wheels, Walmart still says that this is for men six feet and up. A gendered bike for, for males. Come on Walmart, get with the times, it's 2021. But at 430 millimeters or 17 inches for reach and a seat tube that measures the same, this definitely fits more like a sh medium. The seat tube angle is a slack 72 degrees, not ideal for pedaling, but at over 40 pounds, I don't think anyone expects this bike to be a mountain goat of a climber. And it arguably has the best head tube angle, 69 Le Mans, which dabbles in the cross country range, mating perfectly to the long 70 millimeter stem and narrow 690 millimeter bars. So this geometry is a bit off from what I would consider confidence inspiring, especially since the website says that its usage is keep superior control on rough terrain and downhill trails. <laughs> I don't know about that, but still for the price, it still has my attention. So first things first, I'm no bike mechanic, so I took it to my friends at Naked Bike Works to make sure that I have a chance at surviving a real mountain bike ride on this thing. Now they normally do pickup and delivery, but I wanted to see what they had to say about it. First off, Brandon tensioned and trued the wheels, which were super loose, and pointed out that I need to bring a crescent wrench with me on the trails if I want a chance at changing a flat tube. Then he tightened all the bolts, which quite a few were loose. Then he tuned the drivetrain as much as it could be and noted that the derailleur hanger is part of the rear triangle, not replaceable, and to try to avoid crashing on that side. Then he tried to give the suspension a go, but along with having no adjustability, the fork looks like it has 120 millimeters of travel, but it only moves maybe 50 or 60 millimeters before a hard, bone-jarring bottom out. Same with the rear shock. Ugh, there's a lot. Uh... Where do I start? Literally everything. The wheels, the fork. I mean, the shock only moves like an inch. Really, I'm concerned for the whole bike. Especially the brakes. Especially the brakes. Especially the, br Especially okay. the brakes. Because even though they're disc, it's the pads, they're not both moving. It's just, it's just one moving. Oh. So it actually hits the rotor and then bends the rotor to the other pad. They fold you with the disc brakes. Okay. Their marketing work, Shane. So you'd be better off doing the, the V brakes? Honestly, yes. Derailleur? Um, yeah, no clutch, so you're gonna hear this a lot. This is not a narrow wide chain ring to uh, keep the chain on. So in combination of the non-clutched derailleur, a non-narrow wide chain ring, that is a concern, but there is a chain guide right here. I don't know how well that's gonna work. The dork disc. Normally, normally we would throw these off right away, break them off, but in this case, I think uh, it might be the day saver once that chain falls off into the spokes. I mean, the thing that's probably going to hold up the best, honestly, is probably the saddle. Okay. 
So professional mechanics and myself have legitimate concerns about this bike surviving under an aggressive rider on aggressive terrain, but I just want to know if it'll survive a normal mountain bike ride. So like any smart person, I brought it to Moab, Utah to ride Captain Ahab, my favorite double black diamond loop out here. So I am riding this completely stock, but I have done one upgraded. I cheated a little bit. I present to you the $50 carbon water bottle cage that guarantees 15% more performance, at, at least. Yeah, the water bottle cage is clearly gonna give me an advantage. So I'm gonna do one downgrade and take off the thing that's been the most convenient this whole time, this freaking kickstand. I'm so glad that it was metric though. I didn't even think about that, like if I didn't didn't have the Imperial Standard hex wrenches with me to take the thing off. What do you think on tire pressure? 30 to 35 probably. <laughs> I was thinking at least 35. <laughs> All right, and we're off. Here we are at Amasa back. I'm gonna use my dropper post to go down a little bit. I know I'll hit some climbing, so maybe down just a little bit. Quick release, that was convenient. Oh man, whoa. Oh, oh, okay. I'm already like <laughs> trying to learn how this feels. I can definitely feel the like 41 pounds. All right, I'm gonna shift before I start pedaling because if I shift under load, I know I'm gonna kill this thing. Gears keep slipping, dropper, back up. Now the maiden voyage in Moab in the winter surprised us with some weather that wasn't in the forecast and it made the ride more of a spicy adventure and the footage pretty horrible. But before it really came down on us, we managed to reach the spot that I wanted to challenge myself on the most. So we've climbed up, we've made it to the, the Super 8, which is infamous, but they built up the landing. The landing I would say might make it 4 or 5 and it's got a nice transition. I think it's in my wheelhouse just because the landing is, is so nice. I, let's, let's give it a go. On my normal bike, I've absolutely come to love features like this, and I won't think twice about a five foot drop, but needless to say, this bike had me a little bit scared. Yeah. Oh man. front fork's not even moving. <laughs> I have no problem with this drop. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Like zero control when I landed. I don't know how much of that I got other than the landing, but. <sighs> Thing is, I talked to this drop down. Like, eh, it's no big deal, it's in my wheelhouse. Come look at this. Look where my wheels went. <laughs> like, you see what's going on here? I don't know, man. Like, it bucked you for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> the fork normally doesn't move, but I think it actually moved this time. I was hoping that getting the drop out of the way would boost my confidence in how much I could push myself on this bike, but it made me seriously question how much I rely on my nice bike to make up for my shortcomings. And it's possible that this fork only had a little bit of life and I may have just used it all up. Come on. Oh, I have a flat tire. Great. All right, well, I brought a ton of tubes, so. so. If anything was asking for a flat tire, this was it. And I definitely made sure to bring my crescent wrench. All right, let's get back to it. First impressions were pretty obvious and expected. Whoa. It's heavy, fits awkwardly, and the gears and suspension just don't work very well in general. And after the first ride, the fork stanchions were showing some pretty severe wear that even fork boost lube can't make better. Oh man, that was, that was something. I'm hurting all over my hands, arms. The sketchiest bit was definitely the pedals. I was slipping off all over the place on them. Oh, I'm shivering so much. The sign of adventure. Now I know I shouldn't expect a sub $300 Walmart bike to excel on double black chunk in Moab. That's why I took it to a variety of other trail systems around me. The undulating lunch loops in Grand Junction, the flowy 18 road trails in Fruta, 
and Horse Thief's Bench in Loma with all of its variety. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if this Walmart bike could be able to take it. Or well, maybe I, I can't. I won't be able to take it. <laughs> The climbing characteristics really weren't too bad. The steep head tube angle, short reach, and long stem actually kind of favored it. Now yes, the rear suspension does bob a little bit, but I don't think that really holds it back that much. And even though it's heavy, I still managed to climb mostly everything I normally would. It just put me out of breath noticeably quicker than normal with the extra weight and a harder climbing gear than my wimpy legs are used to. Okay. Will the Walmart bike do what the $5,000 bike couldn't? Yes. I'm just kidding. <sighs> Man, I'm... Now on undulating traversing terrain, yeah, not having a dropper post was the most annoying part, but first world problems, right? Now the positioning from the forward leaning steep geometry and long stem put me so I felt like I was always on guard from going over the bars. Putting more of my weight back and in a defensive position, it was just awkward in general and took a bit to get used to. Oh, this has been quite the adventure, but it has been hard <laughs> and scary, but hey, having so much fun but I can't wait to be done. All right, low expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now when the trail pointed down, this is where the website's usage description of keep superior control on rough terrain and downhill trails was an all out joke. But I think we expected it to be, right? You know, the fork was either completely stiff or when it did compress harshly, it would stick down and steepen the bike up even more, not really keeping superior control. But the rear suspension didn't seem to do much either, and when it did, it would rattle like something was coming loose, which was concerning even after tightening up the preload a little bit. Uh, I could see these threads completely stripping out eventually. Now going downhill, I expected to have to do most of the work with my body, and I was right. It takes a lot of tiring body English to survive any sort of rough terrain and downhill trails. My arms and upper body in general were just so sore after every ride. Oh. Sorry. Woo. That's actually uh, the easy line. Sorry. Now sadly, it got to the point where I was holding back for the sake of keeping the bike and myself in one piece. I didn't really push it to its full limit because I felt like I was always going to break it. <laughs> now even on really smooth flow trails where I expected this bike to excel, it seems like every single bump or rock was exaggerated, making easy beginner flow trails seem much harder and scarier than they normally are. No, oh, I lost my chain again. Okay. Now it also got to the point where any little moderately sized bump or rock would cause the chain to drop. Now this was probably the most annoying part. When I didn't expect it, suddenly I was on the side of the trail trying to push that chain past the chain guard that didn't seem to do anything except for make it harder to put that chain back on. Come on. Stay. Ah! Oh. Uh, oh no. Uh. Uh. 
sucks. Yes, even at 35 to 37 PSI, I did manage to get a bunch of flat tires from Pinch Flats. No. Another flat? <sighs> I pumped you up so hard. <sighs> I guess I should expect to lose a chain whenever I get a flat tire. <sighs> I suppose that the most important thing to remember when riding with a Walmart bike is your, uh, your wrench. If they don't have quick release, like the stupid bolts. Now, although they pinch flatted quite a bit, the actual grip performance of the tires really surprised me in a good way. Now, even though I had them pumped up pretty high, they seemed to grip nicely going up, down, sideways, off camber, even on wet slick rock, which I can't say the same for the standard Walmart bike tires that we normally see. This was exactly what I signed up for. I know it. Oh, oh. stop, stop, stop. Okay. There's a gate. <sighs> Man. Boy. <laughs> when all is said and done, can you take a cheap Walmart bike out on real mountain biking trails? Well, yes. Was it fun? Kind of, in a very painful and terrifying sort of way. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. This bike made for a lot of work up and down. It, it gives the worst kind of experience, in my opinion, and does a disservice to what you can get out of actual mountain biking. So who's it best suited for? Well, in my opinion, it's best suited for that parent who's riding around the block with their kid once a week or on the riverfront trail. But at that point, you're much better off saving money and weight by going with a cheaper hardtail or a cruiser with no shock and one that has the rim brakes. Now, I originally wanted to pass this bike along to a friend who fits that parent lifestyle. He's not gonna be doing crazy double black diamonds in the desert, but I think giving him this bike would do a disservice to just that riding around the block. All right, now it's time for the, the shameless promotion. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, what else do influencers do? Oh yeah, if you want some Crashing Dad merchandise, like this new t-shirt design that's super sick, uh, hit the link below, the trail print link below. I'm not taking any money from it. All the proceeds are going to my local trail organization, Cop MOBA, so they can make trails that I can test Walmart bikes on. Hey, hey. Oh yeah, my, my favorite part about this design is it doesn't say anything about the Crashing Dead. It's just, Sweet Colorado design. It does say ride more, crash less, but yeah, not trying to even promote the crashing dad. Ah, such a dumb name anyway. All right, get out of here.